let's pick up where John left off. What, what we saw is the initialization, the um, sequence of steps needed to configure the ports of interest to our system um, so that they are configured for input, output, and our appropriate clock uh, functionalities enabled. So now uh, we're going to use this function. What, what we saw is this function called port f in it, which John wrote, um, and it had in it all the sequence of steps. So my main program then is going to call that subroutine and by, uh, by enclosing it in the, as a first instruction in my main. So my main has a mandatory uh, my main has a call to port f so i'm going to say call initialization of ports and more specifically we're initializing port f pf4 and pf2 um, though john did other initializations in his routine the one that is of significance to us is P4, pf4 and pf2 and like all embedded systems, our system is going to have a, a loop that runs continuously forever. And so the way, the way we write that is a while one, which says while this condition is true, a true is one is always true, so it's going to remain true. So it's going to repeat indefinitely. Now, within this code, then my logic says I should uh, get the input, which is going to be on a switch read the input, and then depending upon what the input is, take the input and write it to an output port. So I'm gonna do that by defining a, defining two global variables. Here are my two global variables. One is called in, which is the input that is gonna be read from PF4, and out, which is gonna be the output that I'm gonna write to PF2, which is the LED, the blue LED. So I will first read it read the information, my in is going to come from GPIO port F data register, which by the way is declared as one of the registers here. And so I'm going to refer to that and I'll get the input. So this says read PF4. Now, obviously I'm reading all of PF4, uh, all of the port F and not just PF4. So one of the things I'm gonna do is use a mask and we'll see what the purpose of a mask here is. I'm gonna mask it with just the bit of interest to me, which happens to be bit four. So that's a one zero mask. And we'll, we'll come up with this uh, a more rigorous way of defining what these masks are in just a second. This is switch one read pf4 into into switch one into our input sorry and once i get the input i'm going to move it so the input is on on bit four so i'm going to move it to two steps so that it's aligned to um to pit pin pin two where i'm going to write the output to. so moving it two steps is going to Get it to the position of pin 2. So I'm gonna make a comment. So shift into position of PF2. So, so now that we read the input, uh, I could go ahead and try writing the code for the output, but best practices in programming are to do incremental coding. That, is, that means that uh, if you've written some code and you expect it to behave a certain way, before you move on to the next step, confirm that it behaves as expected. And we do that by testing. So I'm going to see whether the input that I just read has been properly um, read. So I'm going to uh, save this project, build it, and I'm going to run it to make sure that I have the desired functionality till this point. So I'm gonna run the debugger and 
I have a viewer, a system viewer, which shows me the contents of the switch that I can control. And this is in simulation, so I'm gonna be able to control the switch and see whether the LED behaves. But at this point, we don't have the LED functionality. So what I'm gonna do is I will uh, go through this code and I'm gonna single step. So this is the first step, which is the initialization. I'm gonna step over that because we are not testing that and we go in here and I'm gonna read the in so if I look at my input and and we also notice that we can kind of confirm that the initialization is working by looking at all these registers this is the direction register which which was already initialized the enable register the 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 alternate functions and so on and at this point my uh, the way we're gonna read our data is by looking at this uh, this register which is the data register this will tell us what the contents of the switch are and I'm gonna read it and so notice that right now we have a value of 0x11 and uh, which which is the state of my switch which is this two switches are off and because this is negative logic, the off means that I read a one in those positions. So by the way, this is a pin PF4 is a one and PF0 is a one, which is PF4 is switch one and PF0 is switch two. Both of them are on. Um, are, and then I'm gonna step, I'm gonna read my input and I'm gonna shift my input. And at this point, I wanna view my and I can hover on this and that'll tell me what the contents of in are. I've just read the input in into the variable in. So I look at the contents of the variable and it shows me in hex the value which is a one zero. One zero indicates that what I just read is pin PF4 has a one in it, which is true because that's a negative logic. And at this point, I haven't shifted it yet. And so let me shift it two positions and see whether the shift has done what it's supposed to do. The shift of a hex one zero gives me a value of zero four, which is what I would eventually write to, to the output. So we, we confirm that it's working as in the current state, which is where the switch is off. A good debugging strategy is to check for all possible scenarios, that is, all possible states that the system can find itself in. We've tested the scenario where the switch is off. Let's test the scenario where the switch is on. So I'm gonna uh, repeat my step. I go back to my, my previous step, and at this point, I'm gonna turn the switch on. Now, I haven't read the input yet, so it still shows me the old value, and I'm gonna single step. And at this point, I look at in and I see what, what, the, what it shows. It reflects the fact that the switch is on and negative logic tells me that the data register here is showing me that the switch is, switch is pressed, which means I read a zero. And now I, I can do a right shift and make sure that my value is as expected. So we've, since there's only two possible scenarios, the switch is on or off, we've confirmed both scenarios. Now let's move on to the output. So I'm gonna quit the test, testing phase. I'm gonna go back to my development phase. So this is the process we will follow throughout, that will, you will follow throughout. We write some code, test it, and we write some more code, test it, and this is a continuous refinement of our code. So now I wanna write the output to, to, the, uh, to the proper place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, value, which I have in the input, and now what I'm gonna do is uh, I have to take this in that I've converted and write it back to the, uh, to the data register. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna put here, and a simple way to write it is to just simply write that out to the, uh, write what I have in in to my destination re data register. This will, this will make sure that the switch is, the switch input has been transferred to the 
LED. So we'll see that this, this works. That is what we want to say is this is right output to PF2 and and this will once we test this we can verify whether this is doing what it's doing uh, we will look later on that this is not a friendly way of writing code but we'll get to the friendliness in just a second so let's um, go ahead and build this and debug it so we go back to our debugging mode and we see our switches not pressed so I'm gonna again go through my sequence which is I initialized the ports and then I read the input I read the values I'm gonna write the value out and I see that the LED is on so I'm gonna change the state of the switch and I'm gonna run it again so this time the switch is pressed and the LED is off so I can uh, continue it in full continuously run it so when I turn the switch off and on and off and on I can see that the system is working 